one. Number one is colonialism. In order for you to understand what is happening to you or the so-called world economic order today, we've got to go back at least 500 years minimum. And in that 500 years, we're going to deal with colonialism. And if you notice, colonialism is noted here. And we put an arbitrary date of 1500 to 1945. And, and that's labeled number one. You notice number two is labeled what? Raw materials, labor, and technology. Why do we indicate that? Because of colonialism, the ability in this case of white people, European, predominantly from Western Europe, England, France, Germany, Spain, and Portugal primarily. These countries around 1500 to 1945, because of a number of reasons, they were successful in leaving Europe and beginning to conquer and bring other people under their control and taking their land. And in the process of colonialism, to go into a country, to take one's natural resources, to use the labor of one's persons, and to use the technology, it was this process that made what you call the United States, what you call Western Europe, and later Japan, strong economic countries in the 1900s. So let's look at number two, raw materials. They come to America, let's say they come to Africa, they take your wood, they take your minerals and your food. By bringing these raw materials back to Europe, they're able to now eat well, they're able to build their homes, they're able to build factories. And of course we know about the labor, the free labor that the Europeans and America use in which to build up this country. African people, you know, in synopsis, built the roads here, they built the levees for the river, they planted the food, they planted the, the, the cotton, they harvested the cotton. And why is the, why is the raw material and labor important? Because what was the foundation of the so-called Industrial Revolution that you read about in the educational system here? The foundation of the Industrial Revolution is when? Is when America and Western Europe begins to so-called build up industrially. And that building up industrially was based on what? The raw materials taken primarily from the Caribbean first and then from Africa. It was, found, it was fueled by the physical labor of Africans. Unskilled labor and skilled labor. Africans, when they took, went to Africa, they didn't take out unskilled labor. They took out individuals, farmers who, could, who knew how to plant corn, who knew how to plant rice, who knew how to plant those agricultural products that you find in the Caribbean. So they would take your labor, skill and unskill, and from this skilled labor they will begin to build America and they will begin to build Europe. So you now know they're taking your raw materials, they got your labor, skill and unskill, and your technology. What are some of the foundation of the so-called Industrial Revolution is what? Textiles and chemicals. Well you know the African people have been weaving all kinds of textile products, cloth, so not only have we been weaving it, but we have had in our possession for thousands of years the technology of weaving. All those weaving looms and machines that you find that in the textile mills in America and the textile mills in Europe, they came from Africa. The exact prototype, the exact machines were taken, so when they went and raided, not only did they pull you away, pull your scientists away, pull your, your, your people away, but they took your machines. And it was those machines that would go in to make the spinning gin here and all these inventions here. So they transferred from us not only the raw material, not only our physical body and the labor, but they transferred the technology. That technology transfer primarily from Africa to the Caribbean, America, and Europe is what started the so-called Industrial Revolution for European and white people, your textile. And we can go back to metallurgy where the uh, Industrial Revolution was when the Europeans began to learn how to make steel and how to smell to get aluminum and copper. But you can go back to any part of Africa, West Africa, and you can see where we were smelting iron and brass and copper and tin and silver. Or you can go along the Nile. If you go to the trip with Dr. Ben, you will see where the Africans have worked in gold and silver and copper and bronze and platinum. So it's well documented that those industrial processes in metals that made the Industrial Revolution here came from the continent. The textiles, the textile industry, and all of the technology primarily came. It was the ability to, for three or four hundred years, to drain from you your labor, your technology, and your resources that made America and Europe what it was. 
And if you go through the scenario, you would see Lords of London, all of these big insurance houses in America and Europe, and uh, didn't come into existence until after this process has occurred. So that's the foundation. So when you look at Lloyd's of London and Citibank and National Bank and Carnegie, where did the foundation come from? It came from number two. Your raw material, your technology, and your resources used to make Europe a white people in Western Europe strong and powerful. So there's almost nothing that you can look at in America where you can directly see where it came from this process. And that's why what brings America and Western Europe into 1900 a dominant economic power, dominant military power, relative to the African, the Asians, and the brothers and sisters and others in the Caribbean. So when you're talking about the, new, the world economic world, you have to go back at least to that portion of colonialism. That's the foundation of the wealth of Europe and America. We're not going to deal with the white people from Eastern Europe, because those white human beings called Russians went over the Ural Mountains heading west and equally did to those Asians what the Western Europeans did to us. So you had the white people split in two halves. Those you call Western Europeans, English, French, Spanish, Portuguese, German, they left. They conquered what you call America, the Caribbean, and Africa, and the Pacific. But another, the other half of them, those white Russians, crossed the Ural Mountains from 1300 and began to conquer what is now parts of Pakistan, India, China, and they kill off and exterminated those people in Asia you call Eskimos, Ainus, people of color. That's how Russia got its power and its strength. So you had two parallels. But here we're going to deal with the western part. So as you begin to, and if you look at the map here, what we're saying is those Europeans from Western Europe came out in this portion and went in this direction. But you also had white people calling themselves Russians who after 1300 began to cross the Ural Mountains. And in the age of conquest, what they were doing to us here, what they did was these white Russians went in and conquered these Asian people, the Iranians, the Pakistanis, the Mongolians, the Iranians, and others. And they, those white Russians from 1300 to present, conquered Asia. They came out of Asia and they went across and conquered Alaska. And the Russians were trying to almost conquer Hawaii. So you had a dual conquest on both ends. So anyone who tells you that the Soviet Union is your friend, as European, look at the history, you see that's nonsense. Okay, so as we go on, you see the foundation. Now we go to number three. And number three is labeled trilateral. And the trilateral we just means there are three sides. And since 1900, when white as Europeans got together, they formed different organizations that they needed to project themselves. And the U word trilateral just means three sides. And, and the, the three sides of the trilateral commission, and we'll expand on it later, is United States and Canada is one side. Western Europe is a second side. And they added Japan as the third side. Trilateral Commission was instituted about 1975. And they represent those countries who formerly had colonies and who band together to form colonies, band together to become strong. Let's go back briefly to see who the English are, the Spanish, the English, and the Germans. When you look at the history of Europe, approximately 400 AD, a group of Europeans coming from the northern part of Europe, which you call Scandinavia, Sweden, Denmark, Norway, Finland, and what you call Russia and Denmark. They came down in a series of invasions, starting in 400 AD, and they smashed the Roman Empire. These invasions continued to push 500 AD, 600, 700, 800, 900, and they kept pushing down into Central Europe. When these groups of people who are beginning this invasion, they're called Germanic people. They will come in and exterminate the Europeans who are presently there, which were primarily Romans and Celts. Those Europeans you call Germanic people. One, three sets of these German people would go into what is now England or Great Britain. England and Great Britain was previously occupied by a group of Europeans called Celts who are now survived as the Irish, the Scottish, the Wales. 
So those Germans invaded into the, what you call England. The three groups that invaded, the German groups, are Angles, Saxons, and Jutes. They will come and invade what you call England and exterminate the, the Irish or the Celts. You, their name will change into Englishmen. And when these Englishmen come to America, the name of these people will change to Americans. So the point that I'm going to point out to you, and you see this scheme, that Americans are Englishmen. Englishmen are Germans. They're Jews, Angles, and Saxons, no different than Hitler. So let's clear in your mind about who these Europeans are, you call an American. They come from Germany. Two groups went into France, two German groups, the Burgundians and Franks. They exterminated most of the Celts there, and what Africans were there, and they are now called Frenchmen. So Frenchmen are Germans. Another group, two groups, went into northern Italy and northern Spain. They are called the Visigoths and Vandals. Those white English, the white Spanish, and the white Italian, the white from Yugoslavia, they're Germans. Another group of Germans will move to the west. That group is called the Rus, R-U-S. They will comprise your white Russia, your Boris Yeltsins. So let's get a, a, a frame of reference historically clear that those Europeans who now you recognize as Englishmen, Americans, Germans, French, Spanish, Italian, Russians, they're all Germans. Racially, they are the same, there's no distinction. So don't mix them up about one of your colonizers is better than the other. Okay. It is these Germans, when they were able to occupy and conquer and control all of Europe, when they were able to kill off the Celts, push the Moors out, push the Arabs out from Yugoslavia and push the Turks out, and they finally got control of Europe in its entirety. They fought each other from that point. What was the wars that these European, these German tribes fought? We go back 1600, the 30 year war, 100 year war. The Napoleonic Wars in 1800, there was England, France, Russia, and Germany, all cousins fighting each other. That Napoleonic War, they blamed on Napoleon, was a pan European war, these Germans fighting among themselves. You go on to the Franco Prussian War. So all of last century, from 1800 to 1900, was one series of a war in Europe, from one end of Europe to the other, they killing each other. They continued this intra-ethnic war as World War I. Again, the same group, England, France, Germany, Russia, and they added their cousins in Yugoslavia. That's a pan-African war. Excuse me, a pan-European, pan-German war. They had a little break, they went at it again, World War II. <laughs> a pan-European war. Germans fighting Germans. It is, it is that wars that they had that made it possible for all the people to begin to get independent. Remember, England, Spain, Portugal, England, France, and Germany, and U.S. They had colonies, right? Each of these countries can hold its colonies under its own structure. But because of the Napoleonic Wars, or those wars of 1800, followed by World War I and II, all of these European countries destroyed themselves to such an extent that none of these European countries could hold on to their colonial structure by themselves. So after World War II, they had to collectivize. They had to sit down together and say, look, we, we destroyed each other and weakened each other so much that we can't hold on to our colonial structure. We must collectivize our energy as white Germans to continue to control the world. In 1945, those European Germans, called Americans, English, and French primarily, later added on by the Germans, would sit down and say, look, we have to devise a military unit among us Germans to dominate these people of color. So they born NATO. North Atlantic Treaty Organization is an organization of Western European countries band together against the Africans, the Asians, and etc. because they no longer individually could hold a colonial base. They needed a political structure in which they would collectively try to control you. So they formulated the UN. 
Now they need an international loan shark money scheme to get you. IMF, we're back. Bretton Woods, 1945, America's now becoming the dominant country because the Africans are, are colonized, the Asians are colonized, and Europe is devastated. So United States is calling the shots. So in 1944, United States Germans will call a conference called Bretton Woods in New Hampshire, and they will set up these three organizations. 